Okay, let's take a look at the properties that a database transaction must have. We may summarize these properties by ACID. ACID stands for the first letters of the name of the properties. A. Atomicity C. Consistency I. Isolation and D. Durability Our first property that a transaction must have is atomicity. Atomicity is based on all or nothing principle. Atomicity means that all statements in a transaction succeed altogether or they all fail altogether in case of any power failures or SQL errors or hardware crashes. Now let me demonstrate you the atomicity property of transactions in action in MySQL. Ok, on my SQL workbench I have created two sessions. The first one is root user and the second user is my limited user. I have created these two users to demonstrate you the different transactions. Ok, in first session I will start a transaction and execute two insert into statements to insert user and then I will commit the transaction. After committing the transaction and on second transaction I will check whether I can see the new users or not. Ok let's return back to the first transaction. Here I'm setting auto commit mode to false because auto commit mode means that after each SQL statement the transaction is commits automatically. I'm disabling this property to demonstrate you the at at atomicity property. So as you can see our first insert statement is ok, it has no problem. But the second insert into statement has the same primary key user ID with the previous one so, so I'm expecting that the second statement will be failed. After the failure of the second statement, even if I commit the transaction, I'm expecting that the second transaction will not see the modifications on the first on the first transaction because the first transaction is not committed correctly. It is rollbacked automatically because of the atomicity rule. Let's execute it. As you can see, our second statement has been failed because of duplicate entry error. On first transaction, I'm trying to populate all the users. Yes, you can see Bruce Dickinson here because it is in the first transaction. Now I'm switching to the second transaction and trying to populate all the users. Yes, as you can see, Bruce Dickinson does not exist in the second transaction because since one of the statements fail all statements counted as failed and they are all rolled back automatically so this is the demonstration of atomicity property the second property that a transaction must have is consistency consistency means that data inside a table must follow all the defined rules if for some reason a programming error or something else a transaction is executed that violates the database's consistency rules the entire transaction will be rolled back and the database will be restored to a state consistent with those rules for instance when a not nullable column is tried to be insert a null value this insertion should be rolled back let me demonstrate it to you on MySQL. First of all, I will add not null constraint to a column. I choose is active column. You don't need to know elder table keyword for now, but here how it forms elder table schema name, column name, modify keyword, column name and column data type and constraint name not null. I'm executing it. Yes, it's executed. And from now on, I will not be able to insert null value into is active. If I try this process, 
the transaction will be fail. Let's try it. I'm inserting a new user. Say James Dio Festive James Dio and in is active column is active column. I will try to insert null and let's see what will happen. Execute it. Yes. Here you can see the error. Column is active cannot be null. So so this error has been raised because of consistency property of transactions. Third property that a transaction must have is isolation. Isolation means that two ongoing transactions should not affect each other. I mean, before committing a transaction, modifications in a transaction should not be visible to another transaction. Now, now I want to demonstrate isolation property of transactions in MySQL Workbench. In MySQL Workbench, I've created two connections, as you can see here. And I have disabled auto commit transactions property so so we can manage committing and rollbacking the transactions on our own. So in the first connection we have created a transaction. So in the first connection we will begin a transaction automatically, but MySQL work branch will not commit it automatically. And when I execute and insert a row into user table, the transaction on the other connection will not see the modifications. Let's see it. I'm returning back to the first connection and I'm executing insert into statements. I will insert a user named Kirk Hamid. Let's try it. Yes. We inserted it and we can populate the data. Here we can see the new user whose username is Kirkhamit. Now I'm switching to other connection and and I will try to see Kirkhamit here. I'm querying the user table in the second connection. Let's see the result. Yes, Kirkhamit is visible in the other transaction now. So we have demonstrated what isolation means. The fourth property that a transaction must have is durability. Durability is somehow a hard property to demonstrate so it's enough for you to know that durability guarantees that the database will keep track of pending changes in such a way that the server can recover from an abnormal termination. A database management system logs the pending modifications into a log file generally and recover from that log file after restarting the database management system. In this chapter we learned why we need transactions and what special cases transactions care for us. So we know the importance of the transactions now. We will use transactions inside our Java web applications over and over again. And in next chapter we will learn how to use the transactions, DB connections and connection pools properly. See you later.